We can learn a lot about a man by how he reacts when his worst deeds are exposed. Does he acknowledge his sin and turn away from it? Or does he justify it and continue hurting others and even himself? Muhammad had an adopted son named Zayd, who was called Zayd bin Muhammad, Zayd, son of Muhammad. One day, Muhammad went to visit him and was greeted by Zayd's wife, Zainab, who was one of the most beautiful women in Arabia and who was wearing very little clothing at the time. Here's what happened, according to the Muslim historian Tabari. She jumped up in haste and excited the admiration of the messenger of God so that he turned away, murmuring something that could scarcely be understood. However, he did say overtly, Glory be to God the Almighty. Glory be to God who causes hearts to turn. When Zayd found out that his wife had excited the admiration of his adopted father and prophet, he decided to divorce her so that Muhammad could have her. Muhammad, however, understood that taking your adopted son's wife was frowned upon by everyone in history, so he told Zayd, no, keep your wife. But by that time, Zainab had found out that Muhammad was attracted to her, and seeing the opportunity to move up in the world, she began despising her husband. Zayd, wanting to give his adopted father and prophet whatever he desired, divorced his wife, and Muhammad married her. Not surprisingly, people started complaining. What sort of man marries a woman who's been having sex with his own adopted son? How did Muhammad respond to the criticism? He started receiving revelations to justify the marriage. Allah revealed Surah 33 verses 4 to 5, abolishing adoption in Islam. From that point on, Zayd was no longer called Muhammad's son. Allah also revealed Surah 33 verse 37, where he explains why he wanted Muhammad to marry Zainab. Allah says, And remember when you, Muhammad, said to him to whom Allah had shown favor and to whom you had shown favor, keep your wife to yourself and be careful of your duty to Allah, and you concealed in your soul what Allah would bring to light, and you feared men, and Allah had a greater right that you should fear him, but when Zayd had accomplished his want of her, i.e. divorced her, we gave her to you as a wife, so that there should be no difficulty for the believers in respect of the wives of their adopted sons when they have accomplished their want of them, and Allah's command shall be performed. Muslims defend Muhammad by offering all kinds of explanations for his marriage to Zainab. But in the Quran, we have Allah's explanation. Allah says to Muhammad, we gave her to you as a wife so that there should be no difficulty for the believers in respect of the wives of their adopted sons when they have accomplished their want of them. So Allah gave Zainab to Muhammad so that other Muslim men would know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons. Three quick problems with Allah's explanation. One, how many men really struggle with whether or not they should be marrying the divorced wives of their own adopted sons? Apart from Muhammad, I've never heard of anyone who needed divine guidance on this issue. And yet Allah is convinced that lots of us are sitting around, scratching our heads, thinking to ourselves, wow, my adopted son's wife is so hot. I wonder if God wants me to have her. Second, assuming that Allah wants men to know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their own adopted sons, does he really need Muhammad to go out and do it? Wouldn't it be enough for Allah to say in the Quran, hey guys, in case you're wondering, yes, it's perfectly acceptable in Islam to start lusting after your adopted son's wives until your adopted sons divorce them and then you can marry them. Is this such an incredibly important issue that Allah not only had to reveal a Quran verse about it, but also needed Muhammad to break up a marriage and show us how it's done? Third, Allah abolished adoption in Surah 33 verses 4 to 5. 
Muslims are still free to take care of orphans, but they don't adopt them into their families. So if there's no more adoption in Islam, why in the name of common sense is Allah telling Muhammad that he has to marry Zainab so that other Muslim men will know that it's okay to marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons? There aren't going to be any more adopted sons, so the situation isn't going to exist for Muslims. Why would Allah tell Muhammad to do something in order to set an example for other Muslims facing the same problem when there aren't going to be any other Muslims facing the same problem? The only conclusion to draw is that Muhammad was criticized for doing something really, really bad, having adulterous thoughts about his adopted son's wife, causing his adopted son to divorce his wife and then marrying the woman he was lusting after. But instead of admitting that he had done something wrong, he justified what he had done and abolished one of humanity's most humane practices in the process. Worst adopted father ever.